Welcome back. For part two of Fundamentals of Steam and Basic Steam Components, we're going to look at selecting equipment, schedules and outputs, and then documents that we get from the schedules. So let's get started by showing you below the callouts like PRD 1 and 2, you see there's a pink shading, as well as the steam traps, boiler, composed loads, you can see there's no pink shading. If there's pink shading in the program, that means you have the opportunity to select the product. Doesn't mean it's going to make a selection, but you have the opportunity to. To do that, you can just click on the component, come in under Selection tab, and then hit Selected, and it'll give you the lowest size PRV available for that. Four inch there. Okay. Now, if you want to select all the components at one time in a system, you can just hit this thumbs up button right here and it says select equipment. It's going to ask me do I want to run a project examiner. I'm going to say no. And if the pink goes away, uh, you just click on this and see what happens. It didn't go away there. Selection. Okay. There's the pipe. Click on that trap. Move that pipe over there so we can just get to the trap. Okay. So let's see what that trap is. Selection. Flow is above the maximum accepted value. So we'll come in here. I've got 8,000 pounds per hour. Wow. You know, that's not going to work. Uh, I'm doing that from 800 to 8,000. Uh, I'm doing the break. So let's go to 800. 800 pounds per hour. Now if I hit the thumbs up button, it should go away. Went away on the traps, went away on the PRV, so I can select on that trap come in and see what it is. Now if I don't like a selection, I can hit select alternate and go in and switch it to like uh, maybe you want a B-series inverted bucket trap. Let's see if you make selection in as a B-series. It will actually change the look as well as the selection. And when it makes a selection, uh, let's just click on that. It's got all the uh, under dimensions and weights. It's going to have the characteristics about that. Characteristics, construction type, connection sizes, uh, things of that nature. Now you'll notice down here it didn't make a selection of the boiler. Uh, that's because I didn't go in and I didn't have under selection, I didn't select the type, so let's select alternate. It's got Cleaver Brooks, uh, flexible water tube, hit OK. So now it's made it, changed the picture. And you can go in under the boiler, and there's the mentions of weights, electrical information, as well as the other data that would be associated with that. So now that I have selection of product in a system, uh, now let's go look at the output, what we get from the program. Okay? Now you don't have to necessarily have your product in a system to do selection. In other words, I could just go grab a trap up here and drop it on the screen and click on that trap, and when I do, it takes me to this key selection data. That means I just have to type in a load of 300 pounds per hour. It has a safety factor defaulted to 1. Uh, pressures defaulted to 15. And then I can just hit OK, which you can select here, and I'll select the trap. One item to notice in the software that whenever you're in a dialog box, and if you don't understand what you need to input or what it's asking for, you can come grab the question mark at the top and drop that down. It's going to say, this is a flow available. Okay. Or come up and grab right there, 15 PSI. The entering steam pressure. Okay. So the steam pressure flowing into this component. So there's online help throughout the whole program just by grabbing that and dropping it down. We never get any questions, you know, what's this for, or what's this? It's more, how do I model this system? How do I look at this? So, another just tidbit of information there. Just to cut that off the sheet there. Okay, our output, what we get from the program. Now, I mentioned earlier, uh, it's very easy to copy and paste and put this into other programs. Okay, so we've looked at that. The other outputs would be Let's come to File, the little button there. Then we'll come to Coordination File Options. We'll have a detailed report, equipment schedule, related documents. 
And you can actually have everything in both English and metric units as well, if you'd like to. Just click on that so we can see that. Hit OK. Now you'll see my, my drawing now has English and metric units. Uh, so now let's come. I need to save this project. Let's save this as project one on the desktop. And then I need to come file and open up and look at the equipment schedule. So it's going to open up in Excel and we'll come over. There's the boiler we selected with Cleaver Brooks. Okay. These are schedules that go on your drawings because you have the schematic that goes on the drawings, shows the contractor the sizes and how things need to be piped up. Uh, the schedules have capacities and, and information. And then the other thing we put on our drawings, obviously, would be our AutoCAD or Revit drawings, which shows how things uh, fit in the space. Okay, so when we put a drawing out in our consulting firm, those are the, uh, the three things that our drawings are comprised of, obviously, with specs, too. So let's come over here and look at the steam trap. There's the two traps we selected and information about those. When you do projects around the world and you're dealing with people that love metric, it's nice to look at the schedule and look at the English and metric right here side by side. Let's go find the PRVs right there. I selected those as well. One item just to note here, whatever's on your drawing here is, is going to be scheduled. You can schedule every pipe, fitting, uh, valve, uh, or you can go in the pipes and some of the components and you can turn things off if you, if you don't want to create a schedule. Something might be new or something existing. Uh, you can do that as it turn it off. So let's look at next file, open. We'll look at the detailed report. This report is just beautiful for just really having everything part of the job. There's the boiler, pressures, loads, electrical, the aerator is just going to have, you know, everything that's uh, in the pipes. Okay, just an array of information of all your project there in a detailed report. Created on the fly automatically. As your project changes, schedules change, the report changes. Next we'll look at here will be the file uh, open, will be uh, the related documents. In this little feature here, it's going to fill in documents that apply to this equipment. So let's just show you how to get those. File, download related documents. Okay, this interface right here is beautiful. It allows us to go in and download any type of documentation that Spire Sarco has on their website and put it in your project file. So I could get a 2D CAD file. I could get a literature there, specifications. Let's get some literature there. So next what it's going to do, it's going to go, and it looks like there's six different documents, and this could take a little bit of time, but I'll talk why it's happening. But it's going to go out and it's going to find and let me know what's available. And then it's going to come back and it's going to say, based on these two different traps you have and these PRVs, uh, these are all the documents that are out there that are available to be downloaded. And then I have a choice and I can actually download the ones I, I would like to from the right from the uh, Spire Sarco uh, website or, or the other manufacturer's website. One key item, um, which is uh, nice to download, if you noticed on that interface, it's kind of covered up right here by this, would be uh, the ability to uh, download Revit files and, and CAD files that, that go in the documentation uh, you know, of Revit. So uh, those are files that are, are nice to get automatically. Um, every... Uh, component, uh, okay, here they all are. So there's all these steam, you know, 2D literature. I'm going to hit, you just see the array of them there. I'm going to hit clear all, because now I just want to download, you know, one literature there. What did I get? I got a spirit chart, a flow thermostatic, and a 2D drawing. Hit next. Now it's going to go to the website of the manufacturer and actually download that. Literature sometimes uh, gets fairly large, so it takes a little bit longer. But the beauty about this is I can now have this documentation. And so when the submittal comes in, okay, there's completed now, hit finish. 
Okay. Now let's come in here. I have a little message there, but let's just look at the later documents. Okay, well, that one. It's a little arrow. There it is right there. So it's this trick. Okay. So I downloaded that one. There's the 2D file. I won't take time to open that up, but it would open it up in AutoCAD. And then the literature right here would be the literature of that trap. So I can kind of come down here and go through that if I needed to and look at just things about that trap that, that it lays. So that's how easy it is. Every component, if you notice right here at the bottom, has the ability to download related documents right here and it downloads them right here and now that's part of your project so you can go look at that and, and like I say if this load changes in the system okay just change the load kind of real easy here quick instead of 800 we'll go 1800 and that's probably not going to select those traps at 1800 but pink comes back up Okay, and then if I hit the thumbs up button, the pink will go away on some people. It, did, it does select those, okay? And now, if I need to, it knows if that documentation still it applies to that new selection, okay? And I can go in and it'll download that. So it's, it's just real easy to always be up to speed uh, with that documentation. Um, those are the, uh, what we get from the software, um, let me just turn this off here. So we don't have both units on there. English is good enough for me. Okay, you know another simple thing. If I want to just right click with my mouse, text annotation, uh, I can come in here and just say Steam uh, schematic CG and let's see. Override the font. Make that a little bit larger here, maybe make it a 20. Maybe I want to even change the color to beautiful red down here. Hit OK. OK. You now Steam Schematic, so I can have a nice little verbiage on there. Uh, that's how easy it is to model systems using Steam Design Pro. Analyze, look at them, go in a pipe. So we talked about on the first uh, video, look at pressure drops, velocities, change diameters, you know, up them. I made all this 1,800 uh, pounds per hour on each of those. So obviously the steam pipe diameters are going to be larger now. They're three, they're four, they're six over here. Uh, and just really look at uh, the analysis of it. Now you can always come into the steam pipe and start putting, you know, strainers on here okay just drop them right in there really showing that you know what you want on there here's a little relief valve that would go on that right you want some unions on there okay these are minor components just that check valve we're going to check valve in there just come over here maybe you want a gauge on there that's how e easy it is to do now there's also in here one last thing we'll close on is file, open example. You can come in and look at parts. You come in under Steam and grab a PRV uh, parallel right there under the example. There's a PRV in parallel. I can just grab that and copy that and put that on my drawing over here if I would like it. Okay. And I could hook that PRV in parallel up to my system it has the unions the strainers and all that the release again I could show that uh, if I wanted to or in the in the software that you receive with Steam Design Pro uh, file open example we have detail sheets in here we just refer to a detail of a system Steam right there uh, it shows more of the oh, let's hydronic details Steam and Hydronic both. So here's some Steam and Hydronic details that would be uh, hot water, steam, okay. So here's traps, things that uh, would be around a heat exchanger. Uh, if you want to refer to a detail and don't want to go to the extent of showing that detail on your Steam system. So that concludes this uh, segment. Uh, thank you.